Hey guys, Mr. Coomber here, and today I'm going to be talking about Google's Tilt Brush, which is a VR program that I'm actually recording this video in, and uh, I want to talk about its potential for education, about ways that educators can use it. I've been experimenting with a lot of different virtual reality programs for education because, you know, I, for a lot of reasons, one, it's pretty fun, it's a good, good side hobby. But two, uh, I think that VR has a lot of potential of, of doing things that we couldn't have done in real life. Like, so not only is VR, I'm going to prove to you today, a decent substitute for, you know, the old whiteboard and camera if I was going to record a lesson, but VR is going to allow us, there's many different VR programs that allows us to do new things that we couldn't do before, you know, teaching traditionally, okay? so. Overall, I'll just I'll just throw it out there. I'm gonna give Google's Tilt Brush four out of five stars, but I want to talk about why. And although this is the first video I'm making reviewing, uh, oops, reviewing. Although this is the first video I'm making reviewing, you know, uh, a VR program, I want to say that four to five stars is really high. I have used. I've been exploring so many different programs, and I, I am pretty good at VR, I feel like. So, this is on the, the high end of the scale. It's actually one of, my, one of my number one recommendations for teaching within. I'll make a video on the other couple ones later. But let's talk about why. So, one, Tilt Brush has the two main things. There's two huge things that are so, so important if you ever want to teach within virtual reality. It has a third-person camera, and that's what you are watching me on right now. As you can see, I can easily move the camera side to side and up and down. It means that you are not locked to my headset. So one, that gives me a lot of flexibility because I can like stand in front of it or interact with whatever we're doing. But two, it means less people get dizzy. If I turn on, I mean, if you watch some of my, like, my, my, most, my biggest video, that Half-Life Alex video, a... a problem with it, right, is that you're, you're tied to the goggles, you're tied to the headset, which sometimes makes people dizzy or seasick or motion sick, and that's never ideal if you want to actually teach, especially if you want to teach, you know, long term and not just for the gimmick of it, okay? Two, Tilt Brush has the ability, the second most important thing, maybe if not the number one important thing, which is I can very easily, pretty easily, import files, okay? I can import slides or documents, and then, you know, on the files, of course, <coughs> equally importantly, I can, I can then, you know, write on them, right? I can, I can interact with them to some degree, although there's some limitations there, which I'll talk about. Uh, so, it has a third-person camera, and it has the ability to bring in stuff from your desktop. That's the key thing. I will, I don't even know if I'm going to bother reviewing VR programs that don't do it, because, you know, like, there is some potential, like, there's a, you know, like Google Earth, I can I can kind of live stream myself walking through, you know, e oops, walking through like next to the pyramids while, while giving my lecture on the pyramids. But as far as, um, you know, most of my more, like that middle ground of traditional teaching and teaching online or teaching in VR, you need to be able to show files. You need to be able to show worksheets that you've pre-created outside of VR most of the time. Okay. <laughs> But another reason it's going to get such a high rating of stars is, you actually saw me do this earlier, uh, the, the controls are pretty easy to use. In fact, my second time in Tilt Brush, and I, I hadn't really explored this, I think it, I bought it just because I'm an impulse buyer with video games these days, but uh, my very like second time in this, I filmed a whole lesson for my students, and it was good enough to show off to like other teachers like, like in, at my school because it is pretty intuitive to use. Like, like it, it's, it's not bad. You can write in the air. Uh, I, a really important feature it has is easy undoing and redoing, which is incredibly important. I'll tell you if you teach my style, which is a little bit shooting from the hip. Uh, you can write in a race. You can change colors on the fly. Okay, so generally, hopefully I'm proving to you it's an easy-ish to use art program. Another important tool that Tilt Brush has is a straight edge, okay? So you can turn it on and off pretty quickly to draw straight lines, which again is incredibly important if you, I mean, you you could kind of do some of this stuff without a straight edge tool, but especially if you're teaching math, 
extremely important. Uh, and what are some other key strengths of this? Oh, uh, as far as all my criticism about virtual whiteboards, I do appreciate that I can, in inside of Tiltbush, pretty quickly create a virtual whiteboard. Oops. So this is the best way I've found so far, which is I get these things called guides. This is not really, I assume, their intended purpose, but it works not bad. I will paint on it. I'm used to doing white, although honestly, I don't see why you couldn't do like a black whiteboard and write on it with like neon green or something. If you want to shake it up, Khan Academy style. Um, so here, you know, you can make a whiteboard, and then from a whiteboard, they actually have automatic stickiness, like, so you can write a lot easier. You saw me writing in, you know, uh, you saw me writing outside of, without a guide before, and it, it's, it's doable, but it's never going to look as good. Okay, etc. So, it has a virtual whiteboard. Um, it's not terrible writing on it. You can see it, it automatically like stickies, so it's it's a lot easier to write straight. Uh, another important nice part about this program is it has, you know, what's it called? Potential for oops. It has potential for. Sorry, that's all right. That's one way to delete things. There's multiple ways of deleting things, and in fact. Um, let's move you, let's move you a little bit, because I kind of am tired of that very bright light behind me. So, it has, where was I? I I'm following notes. See, I prepare for these videos a little bit. Uh, three-dimensionals. Oh, there we go. That's what it is. So, another big question with VR slash any technology that I'm bringing into my classroom is, can it do more than, you know, than just normal supplies? Like, if all I use VR for is as, you know, a convenience, because I don't have a bunch of whiteboards in my house, that's not super innovative. That's like, you know, the lower end of technological implementation, because you're basically just, you know, substituting for a real whiteboard. So can Tiltbrush do more than that? Yes, it can. It can, you know, you can spawn 3D models. So this is a car made by, there's a there's a, a whole library of just every model you can think of made by other users or artists. So this is by Attila Dobak. And I can make cars and I can like talk about it. And we can zoom in and get smaller. Okay, you could see, you know, like little kid teachers, I'm sure could could invent a use for that. Um, is that, is that too hard to see on the background? So, like, you know, we could spawn, you can spawn three-dimensional objects and talk about them and that sort of thing. That's one use that I have, you know, oops, uh, I have considered for this. Another interesting thing you can do in Tilt Brush that you couldn't do in real life is easily, well, pretty easily, you know, create your own sort of three-dimensional objects for various uses. So this is a... These are like a blue and a red gemstone that I've created. They are three-dimensional, which maybe there, like you can see, 3D. And, uh, you know, like, for example, I taught a lesson very recently, actually, in Tilt Brush on adding positive and negative numbers. And the way, like, we would do it in real life, or one possible way of teaching it in real life, is you're like, oh, hey, just so you know, these red tokens equal a positive one, and these, sorry, these blue tokens equal a positive one. And these red tokens, they equal, you know, a negative one. So how can we use that knowledge to solve this, like, sixth or fifth grade math problem of, you know, positive uh, four plus, this is, this is actually shockingly hard for even some seventh graders, positive four plus negative three, okay? And so one way you do that is you can show, you know, tiles, right? And I could be like, okay, so let me drop this. We'll do one, two, three four of these and then kind of stamp out three of these one two three oh remember that whenever we have one negative token and a and a positive token we they they zero out they you cross them out okay so that's i mean you can i think imagine many three-dimensional uses for it i'm feeling a little crowded over here so let's let's teleport again okay so next up 
And I left my notes for there, so let me reload them. Okay, what do we got? You can create artwork. So, like, yeah, one possibility of this is you can create, like, three-dimensional artworks. Like, if you were a better... I mean, this is, like, its intended use, right, of tilt brushes to create three-dimensional artworks and potentially either film yourself exploring it or have students explore it if they have access to any sort of 360-degree uh, camera. I think YouTube, actually. You, you could potentially put up a 360-degree video on YouTube. That's that's one possibility. I, I, if I'm being honest, I probably will not use that frequently. It's not. Uh, that, that's pretty hard. Okay, so this all sounds pretty good. Like, this isn't bad at all. It has almost everything I would want. But what are its limitations? Why doesn't it get that you know, sacred fifth star. Well, one, I think maybe you saw earlier, the the whiteboards that I can build and create have a grid on them because, you know, I, I think that's, you know, their intended purpose, again, isn't natively to be used as a live whiteboard. So I can't get rid of the grids. And if you in the comments know a way around that, please let me know, but it seems pretty inflexible to me. The grids, you know, you can kind of lean into it and just teach like, if you're teaching about coordinate planes, I could see it being like, okay, up two over one. You know, I could see some, oops. Okay, see, look how easy it is to undo stuff. There's some potential there, uh, is like just using it with the grids. But kind of, I wish that it wasn't, I wish we weren't locked to having grids. Uh, another important limitation is, oh, you'll notice I, this happened earlier when I have a real life document. If I want to write on it, you can see it doesn't stop you. There's no collision for this this guide picture, which is, you know, again, originally just here, so that way I could, like, look at an artwork and, like, with one hand, kind of draw it with the other, okay? As, like, a guide. So if I'm using it as a virtual worksheet, you know, you can you can do it, but I think that's it's not ideal. It's uncomfortable. It's not... It's not super smooth. Like, all the time when I'm writing on this, I'll walk. Especially if I'm writing something, I'm like, oh, the slope. The slope is, oh, look, my P went inside. Slope is blah, blah, blah. So that's the sort of, you know, real limitation. Oh, another thing is I can't bring in, I mean, again, it is originally an art program. Uh, you are restricted to bringing in only image files. So it's not that hard, but it is kind of tedious to convert all of my worksheets into PNGs or image files before I before I record. Um, so that's that's one limitation. Another weird limitation, again, I've been doing a good amount of these, is the faceplate. I can't seem to hide my faceplate, which isn't the worst thing. And it's kind of, you know, the fun of teaching in VR is that kids can see you instead of just me, you know, like if it was just like a PowerPoint that I was like drawing on the screen of, is that they can see me interacting with it. So that's a sell, but also sometimes if I'm like really close, I block the screen, I think. Uh, that's a small limitation. Oh, and unfortunately, and I, I don't think they'll ever fix this, it doesn't have any physics. And what I mean by that is like earlier, I was trying to teach a lesson. I was actually experimenting with a bunch of different programs, <laughs> trying to come up with a lesson where I, you know, taught circumference by making a circle and then like, you know, I can change size, but like unwinding the circle so that I could like, look, here's how long the circumference is, let's compare it to, like, the diameter. And, you know, I would then, like, grab the diameter and be like, be like, oh, one diameter, two diameters, oh, 3.14 diameters, ideally. But again, I, I couldn't actually unwind it, so I just kind of had to eyeball the unwound version of the circle. So, that lack of, I don't know, physics or malleability or something, definitely is a li small limitation to. But overall, like I said, I give Google Tilt Rush four out of five stars. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Hopefully we can all share this and retweet it until someone important at Google of their probably very underfunded VR division sees this. And then maybe that person can patch a couple of my complaints or come up with a whole new education thirst VR program. I would love that. And uh, thanks for watching.